Hello, my name is Melania from RiftRecall.com and welcome to my guide for the Unhallowed Boneforge dungeon. The first boss is Agnox. He has a fairly large aggro radius so your group must move in together so that nobody gets locked out of the encounter. This boss is all about positioning yourself so that you don't die or do damage to anyone else in your group. Agnox will grip a random person to his melee and apply the Flesh Hooks debuff. This is easily visible by the green circular effect around the player. This doesn't do any damage to the debuffed player, but it will damage anyone around them, so this person needs to stay away. Agnox will also put a purple circle on the floor under a player. This is just a standard move out fast or you will take damage mechanic. His final and possibly most dangerous ability is when he will begin to fly around the room, leaving yellow and white void zones as he goes. These zones deal a high amount of damage and will kill you very quickly. You just need to avoid them and be aware of where the boss is flying so that you can stay out of his path. The next boss is Avoxia. For the most part, she is a standard nuke boss with a few things to take into consideration. When pulling, we stacked up at the entrance so that the tank could pick up the adds easier and we also have a good distance away from the pool in the center. Like I mentioned, there are adds. These are small spiderlings and since you are stacked, they will go straight to your group which makes it easier for the tank to pick it up. They don't hit for a lot but they should be AoE down. There is also hives located at the side of the room. You can't really see them on this video because the camera angle is restricted by the invisible wall, but these hives will glow and then shoot out a purple cloud of gas that will damage anyone that gets hit. However, if you are stacked at the entrance like we are, then you will never be in their range. A random person will get wrapped inside a cocoon and slowly move towards the pool in the middle of the room. This can also be the healer so the tank should be ready with defensive cooldowns. If you get into the cocoon, then you will get a new action button called Test Your Might. You need to spam it in order to get out of the cocoon or else you will be dragged to the center of the pool and die pretty fast. And finally, the tank is a debuff called Liquefied Flesh. This simply makes them take increased damage from Avoxia, so it's nothing major. The next boss is Bruce Hale the Black Chariot. He will occasionally dash at a random player and deal damage to them. The damage isn't much so it can be easily healed. In addition to this he will cast Meat Hook. This will apply a fairly hard hitting dot to two people in the group. It doesn't last for long though so the healer has a choice of dispelling it or healing it. When Bruce Hale casts Spectral Stampede he will go to the back of the room and start to summon a Stampede of Horsemen that will run towards your group as they move to the entrance of the room. If you get run over by a horseman, then you will take damage, but fortunately there will be a small gap in the stampede for each wave, so your group will need to move through that gap in order to survive. There will be a total of three waves of horsemen for each spectral stampede, and after it is over the boss will revert to phase 1 again. Forgemaster Helix is up next. He is a very simple boss, however if you are standing in stuff that you're not supposed to then you will quickly die. The basics of the encounter is that the boss will summon pools on the ground that damage anyone standing in them and these pools will slowly move towards the boss because of the dark vortex buff. This causes fetid blood pools to move towards him. He will also use an ability called Rampant Pestilence. This is a similar to the blood pools because they will damage anyone standing in it but instead of moving towards the boss it will move outwards so players need to avoid it because it does a lot of damage if you stand in it. Mechanically speaking, it is a boss that is simple and only requires your tank to slowly kite the boss around the altar where he starts so that the blood pools are not a problem for melee and ranged DPS and healers just need to avoid the rampant pestilence. The 
final boss of the dungeon is the Necrotic Throne, but it is not a boss in the typical sense of the word because you aren't fighting an NPC that can move around, but instead you are fighting the two parts of the Necrotic Throne, which remain stationary for the whole encounter. The first thing worth noting is that there are three parts of the throne. Two can be damaged, but the third one is immune. Occasionally a player will have their target switched to the section that is immune, so you need to be aware that you are not doing a rotation on something that is immune to all damage. To help this, your group should mark the two sections that can be damaged, so it is easier to see. The Necrotic Throne will spam cast Blood Torrent, which spawns two green circles that will move across the room, dealing a lot of damage to anyone hit. Simply put, you need to avoid them. Ages of Decay is a purple circle that fixates on a random player and moves towards them. If it reaches that player, it will deal a large amount of damage and probably kill that person. Someone else that is not fixated will need to stand in the purple circle to suck it, and this can be done by anyone. Towards the end of the encounter, skeletons will spawn and run towards your group and explode on contact. The explosion doesn't do a lot of damage, it's just something extra for your healer to do. Something that is worth mentioning is that there is a Necro Titan ad on each side of the Necrotic Throne. At the timing of this video they do nothing, but what is supposed to happen is that one will become active at 60% and the other at 30%, but they just need to be tanked. DPS should ignore them because they have too much health, so the damage is better used on the boss to complete the encounter. This concludes my guide to the Unhallowed Boneforge Normal Dungeon. If you want more information you can check out the written guide that is linked in the description. If you find this video helpful then feel free to subscribe and comment. Thanks for watching.